If you're a braider and you're confused on how to price your services, this video is for you. Today we're going to talk about the things that can affect your pricing and how much you should or shouldn't charge for your services. It seems to be the topic of conversation nowadays, how much services and styles cost. Example, $900 knotless braids, but it could be for good reason. Before we get started, all of the information that I'm talking about is available in my ebook, The Ultimate Pricing Guide, that you guys can check out down below or visit visit IndieBindyBraids.com. Okay, so you want to start charging for your services, but where do you even start, right? The first thing that you need to do is research. When I say research, I mean go on Instagram, Facebook, Google, and find the people in your area that are providing services similar to what you want to provide. You want to see what they're charging. Now, you don't want to copy their prices. That's one thing you don't want to do, but you do want to see where the ballpark is at for your area. Your area is a big factor when determining how much you should charge because prices in Atlanta are different from the prices in Montana or something, you know? So depending on where you're located is what the average price of your services is going to be. For me, I'm located in Orlando, Florida, but again, Orlando is not the same as Miami, Florida. You know, there's a little bit of a difference there. So based on looking and researching other braiders in my area, I'm able to find out, okay, what is the range that people are charging here? Are they charging five times the normal amount or is it, you know, below baseline and that's what people are used to paying in this area? Now, you don't want to copy other people's prices because the difference in experience. You could just have started braiding maybe last year versus someone who might be in this area that is a seasoned braider who has 15 years under the belt. Of course, it makes more sense if their skill level is higher that they're able to charge more versus if you're a new braider or if you're a beginner, you might not want to do that because it'll just be so much harder for people to book with your services. Or let's say, for example, you're a licensed cosmetologist versus someone who just decided that they wanted to pick up a new side hustle. There's a little bit of a difference in skill level and expertise and education that if you do have some of those things underneath your belt, you're able to charge more for them. People love to hear someone who is seasoned in the game who has years of experience who has a license or certification if you do happen to have some of those things that's great because then you can now include that and factor it into your pricing the second thing that matters is what services you're offering are you offering styles that take more time out of your day or less some styles can be more time consuming than others you know if you're a knotless braider you know knotless braids take a lot more time than mini twists there's a difference in the amount of time that it takes to complete each style and therefore the price should be reflected in that. Your quicker services, in my opinion, should always be priced lower than the longer ones. Now when I say lower, I do also believe that there should be a baseline that you charge. For me or in the past, mine used to be $100. That was the minimum that I will be making, but recently it has gone a little bit higher based on my availability and you know my years of experience, but I do believe that you should have a baseline and then it should start from there. I charge $100 for jumbo short passion twists. For me, those took about three hours and from there is where I started to raise the price based on how long it was going to take starting from $100 and I did not provide any services below that so that I can at least be making a minimum amount because you know braiders have bills too right so we shouldn't be undercharging ourselves but then again we should take into account how long a style is taking and the amount of effort that it requires the next thing that you should take into account are your products tools and rent okay this one is a big one for me being that I just came out of my old salon suite to now work back at home because the rent was crazy. Taking into account all of the expenses that you have to pay for is really important so that you don't end up digging yourself into a hole and then feeling burnt out because now you're trying to braid your way back out of the hole. The fourth thing that you can consider is the pricing scale. Something that helped me figure out what I wanted to price my services was a pricing scale. So I would charge $50 an hour for a style. Now that might sound like a lot, but like I said, my passion twists, my short jumbo ones, that took me about 
two to three hours was a hundred dollars so to me I would pay a hundred dollars to get my hair done I feel like that just sounds and feels right so but if you're doing the math it's fifty dollars an hour and that's not including any of the expenses that I just talked about right so for me based on that scale if I had a style that took me eight hours eight times fifty is four hundred and I do feel like sometimes people are a little bit apprehensive about that because four hundred dollars is a lot of money it is point blank period but for an eight hour style I do think that it's reasonable it makes sense now you might want to make sure that you're advertising that you know you're professional that you take your time with your clients you make them feel special because like I said $400 is a lot of money for a hairstyle but if you're putting your best foot forward if your work is on point people will pay that much to get their hair done and I'm speaking from experience people have paid $400 $500 for styles that I provide because I'm professional, I make sure the style comes out as advertised, and I have good communication. So your pricing could be based on the amount of time it takes, which I do recommend doing as well. It just kind of gives you more structure to your pricing. And if you have a style that you don't offer that somebody asks you, hey, how much would this be? And you know that, okay, this is probably gonna take me six, seven, eight, 10 plus hours you kind of have a baseline to go off of of what the rough estimate would be of how much you want to charge for it next number five add-ons so adding add-ons is a great way to upsell your prices and by upsell i mean let's say somebody wanted standard knotless braids and you're charging 200 dollars for them now let's say they wanted them past their butt, you can add an extra $50, $75. Or let's say they wanted to add human hair curls, which you know do cost money. And you know, the girls nowadays love boho hair. Let's say now you have to purchase two bundles that are $80 each, so an extra $160 plus the labor to install it. So maybe you can add on an extra $200. So now the price of the original service that was $200 is now about 450 to 475 dollars so having add-ons next to your styles is a really good way to upsell them because usually people want to make some small minor tweaks they love your work they love your parting your overall professionalism but they want to tweak their style a little bit some people like their styles a little bit longer a little bit more fuller a little bit maybe a different color that might be a little bit hard to get at the store that you have to custom order online or custom blend there are a few things that you can add that you can charge for and if it's something that requires a lot of extra time labor you can charge for it the next thing number six is the client experience this one is one of the most important things to me to clients it should be to you so let's talk about it the client experience from the start to the end it's what's going to set you apart from the people that have to undercharge to the people that have that are able to charge a whole bunch of money client experience includes when they're inquiring about booking an appointment are you being nice are you directing them to your page are you being transparent with your prices or are you slamming them with a whole bunch of rules and policies and now the client is confused they don't know if you know your vibe is good or if you're professional like it starts with the inquiry after that after the client books an appointment is now when you need to follow up to make sure that they're aware of any rules or policies that you have and it's all about being transparent and knowing how to communicate with the people you know, a lot of people put a whole bunch of rules and policies on their website and they expect clients to read them and follow them but let's be real here even myself as a braider like if i were to book an appointment i might miss a rule or something that might be super important to you as the braider i feel like it's your responsibility to now reach out and communicate with your clients to make sure that they know everything that they need to do and i think the people that don't do that aren't getting as many clients or cannot charge what they want to charge because clients don't feel comfortable from the get-go so making sure that their experience the inquiry the booking and now the actual appointment is super important when your client comes you have to be on time you have to be prepared you have to be ready to provide the service that you said you were going to provide at the price that you advertised it for it would be or it is 
it's an actual shame that people are out here charging 400 plus dollars for a service and they're late to the service that just seems a little bit off right i feel like because the unprofessionalism in the industry it's affecting everybody because now people don't want to pay four hundred dollars for a service that is worth four hundred dollars because of the unprofessionalism so to one beat the stigma and two be able to raise your prices and charge what you want to charge having that professionalism and customer service is super 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 important remember it's your job as the braider to communicate what the client needs to know how they need to show up where they need to show up to and to have a consistent and direct way to contact you if they have any questions you know people have questions too as a business owner i get that it might be frustrating that some people don't read directions but it is what it is you know people are human and as the business owner it's your responsibility to answer any questions people have it is what it is it's part of the job all right finally number seven is know your worth for this one i just think it's always important to remember that time is money and if you find yourself burnt out or you're not able to charge what you want to charge yet don't worry it just takes a lot of time consistency and professionalism to be able to now market yourself as somebody who provides a quality service when i first started i was charging 50 70 dollars for eight hours of work which at the time being a college student you know i didn't really need a job or i didn't really need i didn't have any bills to pay so it didn't really matter but it did catch up to me eventually realizing that hey you know rent is due bills are due like it's time to figure out what i can do as a braider and as a business owner to be able to charge more and some of those things did include being really professional making sure that i'm presenting myself as a person who provides a professional service including the hair which you know i talked about including the products just making the experience for the client overall easy and enjoyable i feel like that is what that's the key to what helped me bring my pricing up from below the dirt where it was to now where it's at today and people are actively book my appointments today as well so i can speak from experience that making sure that i hit all of these points as a braider has helped me which means that I know it will help you. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below because here on my channel, we talk everything about braiding, business, and lifestyle, my life as a business owner. And if you guys have any questions or tell me your own experience actually with pricing because listen, starting out, it was rough, okay? I understand. So tell me a little bit about how much you charge, how much you want to charge, and just your experience overall as a braider so far. Because trust me, I understand it's difficult, but we're gonna get through it together, okay? That's why you got me, that's why I'm here. And if you're interested in any of my other videos, check them out in this playlist right here. Thank you.